Hey everyone, let's uh, let's take a look at some of these machines here that I have laying around. I think maybe we can build one. This one was one from last year and the motor was no good. And I threw some different tires on it. I don't remember what happened. I don't think it had tires on it. But this is the same machine over here. It, ha it seems to be intact, but it's just more rusty. So maybe it can yield some nice parts for us. And then, you know, who knows, maybe we'll wind up putting a different motor on it a little bit later on and we can clean it up and make it nice. But it, it's, what if we take, what if we get this motor working and then maybe if it works well, we can put it on the better body, right? Because it is the same machine. They're both 27 inches. Um, so if we need anything, we can steal. Stickers are coming off, but it's still 9.5, 27 um, I don't think it tells us here. Yeah, it's missing stickers. Yeah, let's go do that. So we're going to clean this today, and I'll bring you back in as I clean, and we'll see what we have to work with. Kind of gross. All right, we'll get that blowed out. And, and that's, you know, not that I'm going to use this one, but we want to get all the spiders and the gook out of there. Well, let's do a will it run, guys. Uh, so you'll see in the B roll that I've got, I got a machine over here that needs an engine, and that was a leftover from last year. It needs tires, it needs a whole bunch of stuff. It's the same as this machine that's, that's got the engine on it, that's probably right out of your view. Um, Let's let's find out if we can do a swap uh, for parts, and first we'll start off with just seeing if this engine runs. Uh, now, last year the engine that was on that was one of the ones that had like termites in it, and it had a bent valve, and so I don't know what it how that would happen, but um, it did. It had no, it didn't have a bent valve. It had a cracked. It had a cracked piston. Um, I don't remember if it had a bent valve as well, but something cracked the piston. Let's find out what's going on with this engine. Let's dig in. I know I cleaned up everything. I got everything pressure washed, and so it's nice and clean. There's no, shouldn't be any, you know, a lot of critters coming out of it now. Um, yeah, let's just dig into it and see what it does. There was some fuel in it. Uh, leaked out most of it all over the floor. That's okay, right? We don't care about that. Uh, the oil is really yuck. Look, it's all, it's got water in it. So, but we just want to fire it without setting it on fire. We pull the plug. Oh my. Well, it's dry in there, but look at that. That's, that's like good. There's a little bit of water, but that, some of that water could have came from me. Pressure washing. Let's put some of our PB blaster in there. Yep. Uh-oh. Okay, so there's junk in there, and the starter does work, but I think it keeps going off on like an overheat or an overload. Uh, it sounds horrible, right? This thing's dry as hell. Yeah, let's get some of my um, transmission fluid and fuel in that and let that swirl around. Uh-oh, getting too close to my camera lens. Throw a rag on it. Yeah, see, it goes off, right? And then it'll come back on again. Yeah, see, it just went off. I think it's got some kind of a protection circuit in it. Well, maybe we'll just we'll just try to far test it. I really would like to see what's going on with this circuitry here. Um, there's a switch on it. There's this switch on it. This is, if you pull it out, it's a stop. It's an emergency stop. 
If you leave it in, it should be okay. I'm not sure where that switch works. There's no labeling left on it. Yeah, let's find out. You know, I think we should take these wires off because that's an emergency kill and just get this out of the way, right? Yeah, we got a little bit of spark. All right, so that should be on. But now we're just gonna go with some two-stroke and just shove some two-stroke in there, all right? A whole bunch. And then in here, we'll put some as well. We just put a little, I wanna put a little oil on this because it's so dry. We'll thread that down. We're gonna give it a kick. All right. I don't know if that'll do anything. All right, let's give it a kick and see what happens. You guys ready? Well, oh, went off. Yeah, see, it just keeps doing that. I think something just about happened. We might have another starter. Uh-oh. Yeah. You want to see if we have any compression? All right, let me pull plug again. No, there's goobers. See, hold on. I just wiped some of it off. There's goobers in there. It won't start yet. We have to run it to get all of that junk out. So one way to do is we're gonna turn it over a little bit more and then uh, I'm gonna blow it with compressed air. There's just too much junk in there. Yeah, see it all? All right, let me move the camera. I don't wanna get it on my lens. I just have to clean it again. Fire. Ah, yuck. Told you there's gonna be a lot of crap in there. And it, it could be deep down in, but the way this muffler sets up is it does, it's not easy for it to come out. So if you get junk in it, it's really hard to get out. I guarantee it, there's water in the motor. It's down in everything. It's probably damaged, but you know, it's in the oil, right? It's in the motor, so. Oh yeah, you got something. That went off right away. All right, she's barely, she's got compression. I don't know how much, right? But there's compression here. We could try taking the starter motor off. Um, the gauge isn't holding the pressure, but it's trying to make some pressure. Let's see if we could fire it again. Yeah. Fly it up with some two-stroke. Let's see if it kicks. Alright guys, alright, she wants to run, alright, but we need to take the motor off, right? She wants to run. I think if we, if we take the motor off, focus on that, just leave it together. Right, I'm trying to get the motor off. Alright, this one bolt hole is stuck. It's going to keep lubricating it. There's like no room on this side. I managed to get this moving, so I'm going to keep working it. All I can do is just flex one side, go back, try to flex the other. All right, I need my hands. I need both hands. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start taking stuff off, right? We're going to get in deep. We're going to get the gas tank off, the carburetor off, the starter motor. Wow. Oh, my. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of screws on this that are... 
are going to be problematic. This, I don't want to break anything. It's just a plastic cover. Okay, so we got a red wire over here and then whatever this little one is. Got some bolts over here for the tank, top of the tank. Okay, now you can get to, this is all up in here. This is basically, this is the controls, the governor system on it. Looks like water. There's still junk in there. We'll get that out later. I think it might be quarter. All right, good. Here's where the two bolts are. Yeah, this is pretty raw. It just looks like it's mostly dry. There's a spider. Spider bug! So we'll try to lubricate this up. All right, not too bad. I'm going to take this in the other room. We'll clean this out. Um, like I said, I don't think the hose is going to work today. It's got to be frozen. I'll go check, but it's been so cold. It'd be nice because I'd like to clean this off. Um, let's pull the cobbleator off, and we'll take a peek in there as well. This doesn't feel like the right size. These are all... Everything is dry and gooked up. But it kicked, so we should be able to get this thing running. And we want to go over the ignition. We're going to go over everything. We're going to make it nice. There's a little spring up here. Let me get the uh, camera over, and I'll show you. All right, see? The spring is the the furthest hole see so one's got a bushing and the other one's where the spring goes just maybe i can just pick that up yeah all right and then we should be able to turn that out all right let me see i need both hands sorry the heat just came on i'm gonna let it run for a little bit all right so that's our phenolic there we go that's it. Let's take a peek in here. Ah. Oh boy. That doesn't look good. Yeah, see, it's been waterized. Sadly. We might need a carburetor on this one, guys. It's got gel in there and all manner of yuck. It might clean up. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to order one. Yeah. That's a steel bowl too and it's, it's nasty in here. But at the very least, we might be able to get it running. Got a little bit of purple power on it. Super clean. Same thing. I guess we'll let it sit for a little bit. It got a little bit warmer out today. It's raining, of course. Yeah, so I'm just going to let this soak for a little bit. I'll rinse it off. I'll bring it in. And we'll get started. It's getting better. I hit it with the wire wheel, too, in a few areas. Okay, we're getting this thing nice and clean. All right, so I wanted to show you now on these overhead valve 8 horsepower motors, there is a part number over here. And so here's the pulley, right? And on this face, and you could see it now. I'm going to read it out because you may not be able to get to it. But it is, on this one, it is 12E114-02. 68E1 
And now this number here, I'm not sure, this is just an extended number. Maybe it's serial number, I don't know. But the top number I just read off is a model number. And when you go to look for a carburetor or any parts, that's the, the number for the engine. You're not going to use the model number or anything just on the machine itself because that's not really going to help you. Um, depending upon where you get the parts from. Now, Craftsman will probably have everything you need going off of the main model number, but you're going to spend a lot of money. Yeah, water, milk, yuck. We'll let that drain overnight. We'll tilt it up on its side. Take the... Open up the tube on the top, you know, a little vent ventilation. Oh man, hopefully she comes back to life. We're gonna find out. Mmm. I just gave it a little bit of a sprucing, a little paint. A little touch up. All right, let's get to work. We got some stuff to do on it. Let's set up. Okay, so what I have, carbs apart, it's, it's a mess. So what, what we're going to do, I ordered a carburetor from HIPAA, right? They're going to help us out on this project, so they're going to set us up. But in the meantime, that's about three to five days, and it's really the end of the week now. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some acid. Now, I'm not going to use the Alumabrite to start off with. I'm going to use something a little stronger. All right, I'm gonna leave it like that. Let me pour this in here. This is a mess. All right, that's why we're gonna. Yeah, it's nasty. So we're just gonna put some of this acid in. Just gotta get it clean enough so that, like, you know, maybe we'll get lucky. In the meantime, I'm gonna go finish cleaning up the motor. Okay, so I got out a bucket and I put the acid in, and I had to use a drill with a wire wheel. The coating level of coating in here was just so brutal. Um, this came out okay, and of course I poked everything out, and that was that that port was clogged, that one emulsion tube there, but it, it's in good shape. This was pretty bad too, and I had to very carefully pull the little spring thingy off, and um, it's like a keeper, and clean everything good. So let's put it back together. So what I want to do, I'm going to use some of my transmission stuff. I used my wire brush and I went around the seal area. And let's see how it feels. I think I'll do this before I go in tonight. Got everything else done on the machine, uh, on the engine rather, that I'm going to want to do for tonight. Sprayed, clean and sprayed, uh, pull starter and you know, just a lot of stuff. I did get the uh, gas tank cleaned out, but there's still a little bit of water in there. It's a baffled tank, so very hard to get water out. I kept working at it. And I think I've got the bulk of the water out. And it's drying over by the heater for the evening. That should do it. This I poked out as well. Everything is ready to go. At the very least, you know, I'm really hoping that this will run the engine for a little while. We're going to start off with hopefully getting this carburetor to run and making sure that, um, you know, we've got something to work with. It's a little tight. It's probably a little bit of junk in there. Where's the wrench that I had for this? Yeah, she's a little sticky. It's moving. Okay. I'll tighten that up in a minute. Yeah, I just want to... Really hoping that this works. All right. That's it. I'm going to tighten this up. All right, that's working now. How's the throttle? Yep, throttle's going good. All right. All right, good. We'll be back tomorrow.
the next day. All right, let's service this guy. So before I cut out yesterday, <clears throat> we did all the cleaning yesterday. So. <sighs> kind of want to pull it through, but it's stuck. It's sticky. So what I'm going to do next is we need to lubricate it. It's pretty bad. I'm going to start off with some of this first. And even though I cleaned it, it was pretty naggy. These are ch this, this type of chain lube. Got to get in here too where the spring pocket is. It's like a spring hook here. They all have that. Now pull it through. All the way. There we go, that's better. Get it in there. Really work it in. That's much, much better. Which, this is chain wax, and the one I use is the liquid wrench chain and cable lube, which I really like it. All right, see how it's pulling in? Pretty close to where it needs to be. We just want to put a little more tension on it. All right, so listen. Hey. So we're going to take our liquid wrench chain and cable lube. You don't want grease. You can use motor oil, but this, this is a little bit better because it's, it's going to wax up a little for us. We want to try to get that in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's doing it. All right, pull it back a little bit more. Oh, I need more. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, baby. Yeah, too bad I can't get some back here, but I think this will do it for now. Let's get some underneath this part. All right, good. All right, we'll go mount this. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, so since I put some paint on this thing, we got to clean off these standoffs so that we have a good ground or connection point between the body of the engine and the body of the coil. And that, that's something I do anyway. Now I already did the coil itself. And I cleaned it off good, right? So we have good, no issues there. So this says cylinder side. And this, this says this side out. You probably can't see it, but on this coil, you're not going to be able to see it because it's just too dark. But on this coil, it has that. I always put oil on the screws. Just kind of hand snug it, pull the coil away from the magnet. Okay. Now we'll turn the magnet. Until it's even. Here's the magnet down here. And we want to make sure it's straddling. Take my ten thousandths. You can also use twelve. Loosen up the coil. Let it pull in. And tighten it back up. Now I want to make sure it's pulled in all the way, so I'm just going to snug it up with my quarter inch drive and my stubby. Thing back here. I don't hear you. Got my tool. Don't be a tool. Let me get a little bit of chain wax. This will keep it from rusting, which is a good thing. No, not the rust. Because it's in the wet. Then come over here to where the magnet is. Right? I cleaned it with the wire wheel. We'll get some on the gear. Just gonna put a little bit of chain wax there. All right. So while the cover is off, we'll get to the valves. I'm gonna take a peek in here. It's not too bad. There's water in it. Moisture there. We'll we'll blow that. Wipe it off. But it's not all rusted. A little bit of dirt. 
what's nice is I can see the valve events and I can see when the magnets come up to TDC. That'll tell me when I'm up at TDC. So there's my there's my magnet here. So right, I'll make magnets over here. So let's see what we got. So this is exhaust. So there's an exhaust stroke. I'm coming around. That's an exhaust bump. That's probably compression release. That's intake. Once again, I think that's a, a compression bump. And then this should be TDC right here. Okay. Let's see what we have. So here's a five. Right, that's loose. All right. So I'm gonna bring it down to four and seven. So it definitely needs an adjustment. Generally they will because this thing's got some age on it. So some of these motors are just like two to four but we'll go for my general standard, which is four and seven. A lot of motors are five and eight. In other words, five thousandths on the intake, eight thousandths on the exhaust. Usually exhausts a little bit more because they heat up and they expand and you need some room for that expansion. All right, so this is uh, 16. So we're just gonna loosen it up a little bit. And it's actually not tight. So now we're gonna pull the center, stop, out a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to back it out a little. Okay. Now we're going to turn in. We're going to turn in the outer until it hits the stop. And let's see what we have. Okay. All right. It's too tight, so I'm going to back this out. Turn in the inner a little bit. Try it again. So let's turn the inner in until we hit the tip of the valve stem. And let's feel it. It's about right. Right, it's closer. Let's turn. Let's turn the whole assembly in a little bit and see if it locks up where we want it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's about four thousandths. That's perfect. There's actually a little bit of junk, I think, on the the mating surface there, but that should do it. Turn the whole assembly in a little bit because it'll it'll sandwich everything in nice and tight. Yeah, that's good. It's a little tight, but. I think that'll work. So I think it's just a bit of debris. All right, let's loosen this one up now. It's actually not tight. Yeah, I'm glad we were in here. There we go. Let's tighten it up a little bit. We'll go to seven. Yeah, generally speaking, when these motors get a little older, right? If you haven't, if you haven't had an opportunity to, uh, you know, have own it yourself, right? You're coming across it like I am. I mean, this is our donor motor. You need to come in here. Yeah, she needs a little bit more. <coughs> I'm still sick. <coughs> Getting closer. See if we maybe bring the whole thing in as a sandwich. Yeah, that's that's good. A little bit more if we can. Oh yeah, that's nice and tight. Yeah, that's that's more than enough. That's kind of too tight, but we're gonna leave it like that. That's not bad. All right, so good here. I'm going to put the cover back on and we're going to proceed. It's nice. It's got a nice captive gasket. It's not too bad in here. All right, we caught this in time. Be back in a minute.
A few moments later. And I put assembly lube on everything, some kind of no seize. We'll put some grease on that too. I think we'll just put some our chain wax on it. All right, now we just got to put the little cover on. Put some of our chain wax on. All right, done. Now, I gotta drill this out. This broke, bolt broke over here. There's this weird plastic piece. We might as well put all of it back, like all of the pieces back. They do something and who am I to judge, right? Let me see if I can set that up. We're gonna drill, we'll tap it and we'll just pass the drill in it and we should be able to put like a quarter 20 in there. That's a blind hole, but you know, it's not that important. So I'm not too worried about, we don't have to be super precise here. We just need a fastener. Probably somewhere around here. Push it over a little bit. You can steer it. That'll do it. Let's see. Let's start off with something a little smaller and sharp. There we go. Let's see if we can steer it over a little bit. Okay, it doesn't really matter, but there we go. Yeah, that's oh yeah, that's steering it. Yep. Oh, that's perfect. Excellent. Yeah, we'll take it out to the full size. That's stupid. I hate this drill. Twenty minutes later. I'm gonna tap these out quarter, quarter twenty. I'll do both of them since the other one barely came out. All right, get these bolts done, and then we could put the covers on, and then we can do the carb in the tank, and we'll put some fuel and some old oil in it, and maybe we can just strap it to the bench for tonight. All right, well, I got the plastic cover on, and it, it ties in the shielding over here as well, so you kind of need it, I suppose. I mean, put it back. Um, what we need to do now is I got the bolts sort of sweetened up. This is the gasket. I think we'll sweeten it. A little bit of my two, my uh, tranny fluid stuff. And I'll sweeten it up a little bit. All right, it kind of locks in here into this phenolic spacer. We've got to put the phenolic spacer in. All right, and try to line it up. I don't know if it goes one way or the other. We got to hang the rod and a little spring. I just put the spring on. Kind of sneak it in. Careful because you'll screw up the phenolic plate if you don't get them lined up right. You'll break it. There we go. Make sure they line up. That feels about right. That's good. Alright, that's that. Let's see, this works and the throttle should work. Yeah, it seems to be. Right. Basically, it's being driven by the only by the governor. The governor. All right. Next step.
when I get the plug all nice and cleaned up and capped, I'm gonna I'm gonna see about getting another plug too. Um, this is not the right carburetor, so I'm gonna show you why this does not come up high enough. And there were adapters for some of these carburetors. <clears throat> we're gonna get into that in a bit, but just to show you real quick, when you go to put the top on, right, it covers over the choke, and this came with some kind of primer bulb. So I ordered this carburetor, and uh, yeah, something's not right. So we're going to have to deal with that later. I'm just going to put some, like, what I call good used oil. It's whatever oil that I save from my cars and whatever I take out that's, like, decent, you know. It's not that bad. It's dirty, it's, but it's, it's got good lubrication. Is we'll find out if she's going to come back to life. We're going to waste good oil. Plus, with the water that was in there, you need to rinse that. There's mung hung up in there. There's hung mung. So we need to kind of get that rinsed out. And one good way to do it while you're testing it is just put some used oil in. All right, let's see what gives. I think I'm going to let it run a little bit longer and we'll drain the oil again and then we'll run it and we'll mount it. Uh, yeah, let's put some more of that used oil in because it's still a little milky. So we could get more of that out. And I'm just going to turn it back on. And let's see. So we shouldn't need much. Uh, we'll put a little choke on it. She's running really good. All right, let's pull the oil. Okay. That's nasty. All right, we're going to get some more of that used oil in. <laughs> 